In this video, we will learn about logistic regression. Um, just to be clear um, on the difference between linear regression and logistic regression, um, I had a video on linear regression um, prediction just a few weeks ago. Um, but the difference, the main difference, is the type of variable that's being predicted. So linear, it's going to be a continuous variable. You know, something that can be like an intimate or an inf infinite amount of possibilities, um, whereas uh, logistic regression is classification, so it's predicting like a, a binary or dichotomous um, variable rather than continuous. Um, I'm going to be using the same Davis data set. It's the poverty data set from the last few videos I got from Kaggle. It just has information all about poverty and how we can uh, potentially predict poverty. Um, so I'll just clear out the workspace real quick and I will load up the data set. We'll just call it poverty. Um, and we'll just get a, like a sneak peek of that real quick just to kind of remember what it looks like. If you want to pause and look at some of this, I'll scroll through it. Um, but we won't have to worry about most of these for the video today. We're just going to worry about a few of the variables. Um, so first thing that I want to do is I want to convert um, the literacy column or into a, a factor because that's actually what we're going to be predicting in this video. We're going to use a few other variables to predict literacy and with the logistic regression you cannot use it in your model unless it's a factor. So first of all I'll just show you um, using the is factor function you can you know just test to see out whether something's a, a factor. Um, in this case it's not. So using the as factor function in this um, syntax we can convert it to a factor and then if I go over that again true so now it is a factor now we can use it in our model so I'm going to start building out the model um, to predict poverty and I'll just call it glm dot oh and I said to predict poverty but I meant literacy glm dot literacy set it equal to the glm <coughs> function where we define um, the first thing that we're going to define is the variable that we are predicting so that's literacy and then it's a lot like the linear model um, then we just write in the factors that we're using um, which will be education level age and something called is urban this is whether or not they live in an urban environment so let me just type those in real quick education level plus age plus is urban. So this basically just means we're using all of these variables to predict the um, to, to predict literacy. And um, then we'll do our data, which is going to be poverty. And then family, which is going to be binomial. Okay, and if I typed everything in correctly, it should run without an error. Okay, so now we have our model. So what this video is going to accomplish is now that we have our model, we're going to test the accuracy of this model by predicting literacy using the same data set, and then compare, but with this model, and then comparing it back to the original um, literacy value that's in this data set. So in order to do that, um, so I'll make another object, and this one will be glm um, predict dot literacy, and I'll use the predict function, and the the first argument will be our model, and then I'm actually going to have to cheat and go back and look just at this syntax real quick. Okay, and then it's the data set and the type. So I'll just paste that right in there. So then you have your data set and then the type equals response. So once I run this, we have now created a new um, object that has 
all the predictions for every row in this data set using our, our model for literacy. Um, so if we want to look at like first few rows, um, we can do Dylan dot predict dot literacy. I don't know why that's not autocompleting. Um, but there you can see down here, um, those are the values. And so essentially anything that's close to a 1, is, so everything's in between 0 and 1, and anything that's close to 1 is going to be, is literate. Everything that's closer to 0, we're going to define as not literate. Um, but before we can do that, we have to convert these values back to um, the original label that was in the uh, in the data set, which I'm going to highlight that, and you can see it's a bunch, but it's true, false, 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 true, and it's actually not even the like the boolean. It's um, like literally just a string of true and false. So uh, we're going to convert back to that, so then we can run a check to see did our model accurately predict you know what was already in the the data set to see the accuracy. So um, we can do that. I'm just going to make a new uh, object real quick. Um, what do I want to call it? Oh, actually, I don't want to create a new object. I want to use the same data set, but add a new column. And I'll just call it predict.literacy, if I can spell it right. And then I will set it to, so I'll use the if else function. Um, it's a quick way to write an if statement that will um, filter through an entire um, like data frame or object. So um, I'm just, just going to copy and paste this. I'm going to say if it is greater than or equal to point five, then set it equal to true, and then the next one is the else, and I'll set it equal to false. So this is going to change all these values that are in here. Um, sorry, that are in here to be true or false depending on if they're greater or less than 0.5. So let me run that real quick and then I want to just look at a sneak peek of that. Say head. Um, and if you don't know, head is the function that will just show you like a, however many rows you specify of your data frame. So and if you don't specify, then it's just going to return 5 by default, but you can do like 10, and it will do 10 rows. So you can see that they've all converted back to true or false. I'm just going to clear that out. And so now we just need to compare this, so this new variable, the predict.literacy, against the original um, literacy variable. So, and so we can do that by creating a new object and using the mean operator, actually, um, to compare the two. And then it will take the average, and if it's true or false, it'll be a 0, 1, and then it will take the average of how many zeros and ones there are and divide it by the number of rows, and that will give you a percentage, which would then tell you how accurate it is. And we are just going to compare the first 35 rows against each other. Uh, you can compare every single row, um, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to keep it at the first um, 35 rows. So again, and I'm just going to copy and paste, use the head function, and then I'll say equals, and then I'll copy this. So that's the, the new one, the new field that we've generated versus this is the old one. And we're going to see if, <clears throat> so if a majority of this new field 
matches up with this original field, then we know that our model worked pretty well in predicting the literacy. If uh, not a lot match up, then we know it wasn't very accurate. So we're just going to print that value, 0.74. And it may be higher or lower if we were to use every single row in the data set. Um, but essentially, this model is predicting the literacy um, using those three variables, education level, age, and is urban. It's predicting with a 74% accuracy. So, so not bad. I mean, it could be better, but it's not bad. Um, and essentially, that yeah, that's all I wanted to go over today. Um, just to recap, we built a logistic model for prediction um, to predict the literacy um, column using these three variables. And then we ran a prediction using the predict function. Now, if we had a different set of data, um, we could plug that in right here instead of using the same one that we were already using. Um, but since we wanted to sort of test for accuracy, we used the same one. But if you want to predict new um, literacy for new data, you could plug that data set right in here. As long as it has all the variables and fields that we were using to predict, then you could plug any data set in right here and use it to predict the literacy. Um, since we were using it to test the accuracy, um, we then just added a new field right here and compared it to the original in this. And so that, I think, is a pretty cool way to test out the models and the accuracy of the models. Um, thank you for watching. Um, please tune in for my next one.